Good afternoon, uh, Colonel Warden. Charles Atkinson, examiner.com. Charles, thank you. Washington. Nice to be here. Well, I want to welcome you to Atlanta. My first question is, I want to uh, mention and ask about your six days in lunar orbit. Mm -hmm. What was that like? What, was, what were you doing, and how was, uh, how was the feel of it? Well, we were, we, we were in lunar orbit. Um, we went into lunar orbit the night before Dave Scott and Jim Irwin got in the lunar module without the surface. And then after they came back up, we spent another day and a half. I guess it was about six days total. It's 75 revolutions, which are two hours each, 150 hours, and that's pretty close to six days. Um, and three of those I was by myself when, it, when they were down on the surface. And, uh, you know, that's always something that people talk about because they say, you know, what's it like being up there all by yourself for three days? And uh, my honest answer is it was the best part of the flight. Um, I had a lot to do. Uh, I didn't have anybody in my way. I could do it you know, uh, straight away and not have to worry about working around somebody else. Um, I enjoyed being by myself because I was basically trained as a single-seat fighter pilot in the Air Force, and I liked that. Um, I uh, was delighted uh, after four and a half days with those guys to get rid of them for a while. Mm -hmm. So that part was nice, too. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the best part of that was when I was on the backside of the moon, uh, away from the Earth where I uh, didn't even have to talk to Mission Control. And I was totally by myself and looking at the wonders of the universe out there, and it was rather rather unusual and rather neat. Can you expand on what you did while you were alone in lunar orbit? Uh, well, experiments, photography? Oh, yeah. Uh, and not just alone, but the whole six days that we were there, we did pretty much the same thing uh, every day. Uh, I had two large cameras. One was a high-resolution camera. The other was a mapping camera that I carried with us, and uh, I photographed the lunar surface, uh, taking kind of strip maps as we go, and I actually ended up photographing about 25% of the lunar surface. Uh, I had a suite of remote sensors that were on extendable poles to get them out away from the spacecraft so they were in clean, you know, they could see clean. Uh, and, and, and of those, we had, I had uh, x-ray, I had... Uh, uh, had a magnetometer, had microwave, had gamma ray. Um, what else did I have? I, I, I had a couple of others too that kind of escaped me right now. But I had a whole suite of these things. I had a mass mass spectrometer too that I put out, um, and I was moving those in and out a lot during the flight. I did a lot of visual observations. That was kind of the main job. The, the, the photography and the visual observations were the two biggest things that uh, that I did when I was there because. Um, I'd been pretty well trained on, on, on lunar geology by then, and um, that was, uh, we were looking for certain things, and uh, so I kept my eyes on the surface of the moon a lot, explaining and describing various features uh, to see if we could find certain things. And the, mo and the, and, and, and the thing that we really looked for was uh, evidence of volcanic activity. And uh, we found that, I found that, in the uh, Taurus Littrow area. And as a matter of fact, that, that was such an important find that they changed the landing site for Apollo 17 to go there. So that was kind of neat to know that those observations were, were, you know, were really valuable. And I also took a lot of uh, pictures, uh, handheld uh, Hasselblad pictures of the moon surface. And I also took pictures of low light level phenomena, like looking out at faint dust clouds and that kind of thing. So I was pretty busy, That's about fine. 20 hours a day. Now I'm holding your book, uh, Falling to Earth, mm -hmm. your new book, and it's right. getting great reviews, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, former astronauts who worked alongside you had some great words about the new book, Falling to Earth. Why did you come out and why this time in your life to write this book? Well, the flight was one thing, and if you look beyond the flight, uh, before and after the flight, some things happened that were not very good. Um, and um, uh, as a result of uh, some things that those things that happened, such as carrying unauthorized postal covers to the moon and back, uh, I got fired. Uh, the problem was I wasn't the one who carried them, but I was the one who got fired. And uh, Dave Scott, who's the guy who did carry them, did not get well. He got reassigned, but he stayed in Houston. He didn't have to go anywhere else. And Jim Irwin retired and, and formed a Christian fellowship organization called High Flight. And he started giving testimony around the world. So anyway, I got fired. Um, and uh, something like 10, uh, 11 years later, uh, I sued the government over that. And uh, that was kind of interesting because they had 
violated my constitutional rights. It's a, it's a, it's a prime example of what a bureaucrat can do to you if they really want to tag you as the bad guy. And <clears throat> uh, what happened there was that these postal covers that were carried on the flight, they asked us to turn them in voluntarily, and then they ended up putting them in the National Archives. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was that was interesting, too, because they were in the storage bin right next to the Warren Commission report. So that was kind of an interesting. Hmm. And, um, and, and, and with instructions that we could never get them out. Well, that's a, that's a very clear violation of my constitutional rights uh, because they never went to a court. They never went to a judge. They never got a search warrant. They never got, I mean, they, they just, we, I turned them in and then they took them and put them in storage. And that, and, and that was pretty clear. So I sued the federal government in uh, federal court down in West Palm Beach, Florida, and uh, by and by they uh, just gave everything back. It, it never went to trial. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I felt kind of vindicated at that. But of course, you know, the way things go, when, when you do something that people think is wrong, it makes headline news. When you prove that what you did was not wrong, it's probably on 19 or 20 page. Uh, and that's what happened to us. Uh, the guy who made all the noise about carrying those covers to begin with, uh, I talked to him right after I had collected all the covers, the postal covers back from, from NASA, and uh, told him that, uh, you know, the whole thing was wrong, and that we got them back, and they violated my constitutional rights and all that. And it was a little tiny article on page 19. So I, that's so much for the media. Well, Falling to Earth is a very interesting read. I enjoyed it mm, thoroughly. And uh, so let's go back to 1971, 40 years ago. You're uh, preparing to leave lunar orbit. However, mm. you, while aboard Endeavor, you jettison Falcon. Falcon is slammed into the moon. What mm -hmm. type of results did you expect? Well, that was uh, the, the, the asset stage was pre-programmed to go back down to the surface and crash. And that was to calibrate the seismographs that we'd left on the surface. There was one, of course, Apollo 11, Apollo 12, Apollo 14, Apollo 15. There were now four seismographs strategically placed around the moon. And uh, by uh, crashing the ascent stage into the surface, they could calibrate them because they know the energy exchange. They calibrate those seismographs. And then if any events occurred, like meteors hitting the moon and that kind of thing, then, they, then they've got calibrated seismographs to, to read. And, they can begin to uh, put together a story of what the inside of the moon looks like because uh, that affects all of them and they're widely spaced and, uh, the, and so they could triangulate and, and, and figure out where uh, the event occurred and, 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 and I think through that over the years they've begun to uh, build a pretty good picture of what the interior of the moon looks like. So Interesting, I was out at uh, Google headquarters mm -hmm. last week uh, giving them a talk, and they took me to a, a, a display that they had. is three very large flat panel displays, and they punched up Google Moon, mm -hmm. and they and they zoomed in uh, on their display. I don't know if you've ever done that or not, mm -hmm. but it's really kind of fun. Yeah. They zoomed in on our landing site, and I noticed that the that the strip of film that went across our landing site was a little lighter than the films on either side of it. So I'm talking to them out there, and I look at that, and I say, all of a sudden I say, you know what? That's a picture I took. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool. Now it's on Google Moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool. That's great. And uh, uh, in closing here, uh, you made what uh, was the first deep space spacewalk. That's right. By a human. Mm -hmm. What was the feel of that? How did Earth look? How was the moon over your shoulder? Well, the feel, is, uh, the feel of it is a lot different than the view. Mm -hmm. uh, the feel of it was, gee, I've done this 500 times before because that's what I did in training. Uh, and you know, you know yourself that if you if you do something over and over and over and over and over, then when you got to do it for real, it's kind of like doing it over. So it was, as a matter of fact, I was uh, I was too well trained for that because I finished up the job in less than an hour. Uh, where if I had bumbled around a little bit, I could have stayed out there a little longer. But I had no reason to stay out there. I had no excuse to stay out there. So we had to terminate that spacewalk after about 38 minutes. Uh, but I did go out a third time and stand up on the outside of the service bond to look around, and I could see the Earth out of one side of my helmet and the moon out of the other, and it was kind of a dramatic uh, place to be. Very nice. Well, yeah. thank you, Colonel Warden. Appreciate Charles, your time. Charles, thank you. Yeah, thanks.